Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, as I stated in the last video, this was going to be my next build and I'm already getting started on it. 55 Chevy convertible. I've already removed my parts that I'm going to get to assembled and get painted. This is a, uh, already it's looking like it's going to be a really neat kit. Um, yeah. So actually, to be honest with you, the, the parts count with this kit is not, not really high. It, it seems simple and straightforward. But anyway, I don't think I'm going to paint it this color. I don't think I have these colors, but I am going to two-tone it and just don't know what color yet. So I'm going to get some parts glued together and start deciding what paint color to paint this thing. Um, if you haven't already, guys, subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate it if you did so. That would help me out tremendously. And uh, I'm going to get started on this. This is going to be so much fun. Hey, I, I, I talked about in the unboxing that I did of this when I thought the car would have been destroyed. But anyway, the unboxing that the chrome would have all been taken care of. But so the piece of chrome here on the on the body that one is not so if you can see here on, on here I will have to bare metal foil that but as far as that goes it's pretty well the chrome is um, I don't have the chrome tree right here it's behind me but as far as that goes the chrome is pretty much taken care of with with uh, what comes with the kit so I have to do just it looks like to me that one spot there and pretty much it maybe a few other places I'm not sure yet but Anyway, guys, I'm going to get started on this, get some parts glued together, get some paint on it, decide what color, get some primer on the body. Got a little bit of flash on some parts. I'm going to clean those up too, and we will come back in just a second and have a status update. Stand by. Hey, guys, real quick, as I begin to clean up the body on the 55 and do some, there's quite a bit of um, mold marks and such. Um, the, the edge of the, let's see if I get this zoomed in, the, the top of the, so you can see that ridge, um, quite a bit down around the tail lights where the molds went together and things like that. Um, generally I would use a piece of sandpaper, um, but my friend Mark over at Hobby Nut has sent me these sanding pads and I wanted to quickly go over those and let you see these. I'm about to use them on this, so we're about to see how these things work. So he sent me two different brands. The first brand here is the Squadron. These are Squadron. I'm going to link these, by the way, all these sanding pads. I'll link them in the description over to Hobby Nuts. So if you're interested, you can go check them out. These are the uh, Squadron, and it goes fine. And it's got tri-grit. This one has a really fine back. I don't know, probably somewhere around 800 or, or, or finer. You've got the coarse they're both sided and they're also padded so you've got those padded type of of uh sanding sticks these are really nice actually they're not like i have some things that i bought from the dollar store but they're not specifically made for this so they're made for like fingernails these are actually made for for sanding models and on these these are the how do you say this anything any fin or any, I don't know, any fin, it looks like, I-N-F-I-N-I, -I -I. infinity, I don't know, okay, whatever, I'm not good at spelling or reading, apparently, so these are bigger, and they're really, really soft, so if you have that large area that you need to sand and contour, these pads here, they're double-sided, he's got them in 220, 400, 600, 400, and then, you get up here to these, these are much thinner. So these are thinner and the grit 800 and then also a 800 with a smaller one. But anyway, I'm going to try these out. Go over to Hobby Nut. I'll, again, I'll link them in the description. But I'm about to use them, put them to good use here on the 55 because I've got, I've got some places I need to be able to bend and uh, do some filing and such. But anyway, just wanted to throw those out there, guys. Go check it out. Hobby Nut Models, link be in the description. And let's get to sanding. Stand by. Okay, 
Okay, so here we go. I got my body primed and I've got it sanded and it's ready to go. And I'm gonna do a two-tone. I'm gonna do bright red and white. The back portion will be white, the front portion will be red and the hood. Interior will be also a two-tone red and white. Um, so I've already got my, like I said, I've already got my paint mix ready to go. I'll paint the first, I'll paint the red, then I'll tape off and uh, paint the white. So stand by, here we go. So here we go got quite a bit done as far as painting goes since the last segment here got the i went ahead and went i made a mixed a cream color to go with the red which i think is a wonderful combination kind of reminds reminds me of a vanilla coke or something um looks more white on the camera than it does in person here but anyway got that painted i taped it off painted it um also painted the door panels this cream i'm going to go back in with the interior color now take that off and the same with the seats i'm going to leave the seats i'll leave the top section the cream section and then i'll paint down here this will be a i'm not going to paint them although that is the same color as the body color i'll end up flat coating you don't want you know gloss shiny seats but i'll go ahead and uh, also going to tape off the back seat and do some painting there but I'll, I'll choose another interior color to go with that cream color. And I think that will look really, really good. But the paint on the car has turned out great. I'm uh, very pleased with that. The hood there. Went ahead and got the dash painter. Forgot the, to paint the darn steering wheel and the uh, shifter or the uh, steering column. But I've got a little bit of that red paint left still. So that shouldn't be a problem. And I got the chassis painted along with the other chassis parts. Exhaust. I'm going to do some black washing now on my wheels. Or my, I'm sorry, my, uh, well, I guess you could call them your wheels. It's like the hubcaps. But um, engines together. Just put a light mist coat of red on it to give it, uh, leave uh, always flat black uh, primer my, my engines and things. And I'll paint the transmission. Got some chrome parts off the tree. It does look really nice when you take that chrome piece and put it on the side. It does It looks really, really nice. But yeah, I got some progress. So I'm going to I'm going to tape up these door panels and the seats and get the interior painted. And um, we'll be back in just a second. All right, so I got my seats taped off and I got my door panels taped off. So and then I've got my back seat taped off and so i was going to do my seats red and match but i think i'm going to actually spray the seats brown it may be a big mistake and the door panels but i think it would be a good contrast with the body and the brown interior i think it's going to look nice and if it don't look nice it'll just be brown so i'm going to uh mute the volume so you don't have to hear my Vacuum run, and I'm going to paint these. Stand by.
All right, well, I got my brown and cream colored interior done. And I just think it's going to look really, really good up against this. You can't tell anything about that the way I'm holding it, but against this uh, red. Oh, it's going to look nice. So I painted that. What is it? Uh, satin brown boots is what the color's called. And then I flat coated the entire thing after I sprayed that, although that was a satin the uh, cream was not it was a it was a gloss so i had to flat coat it got my steering wheel painted too by the way um yes i want to answer a quick question that some of you may be thinking i thought you didn't use spray paint anymore no i use spray paint all the time um i i never airbrush I, the only thing i airbrush is my body so that's all i airbrush is that's it that's all i've airbrushed is this and the you know the red cut the dash and the the hood over here but yeah i still use spray paint i use it all the time who in the heck would want to just airbrush your chassis i mean yeah some of these guys you know you can do the chassis where it's got the overspray yeah you kind of need to have a controllable uh sprayer for that but with this i'm going to go over this with some i'll dry brush this and give it a not it's not going to be it's going to be like a new car but it, it still needs to be a realistic new car i mean really does a new car really look black shiny black even though that's flat black no it doesn't i'll give it a little bit of uh illusion of shadowing and things like that i did black wash my wheels um hubcaps and they look really really nice i also went ahead and ran the plug wires on the engine and interestingly enough they have to go under the manifolds because these darn manifolds stick up so they're so high you couldn't have got it so they had to have run them uh like that in the in the in real life i didn't look at a picture for reference but um i ran the plug wires under there went in nicely lost the distributor so i had to build my own i have no idea where the darn thing went it was so little i started looking for it and it was gone so i just made made my own it's just i used a piece of piece of the tree and uh there drill it out anyway what else was I going to say? I don't remember. Oh yeah, yeah I do. So after I flat coated all my interior here, you can't tell this on the video, but it was just so darn white. It just looked fake. Uh, what do you mean? Well, if you were here, I would have been able to show you what I meant. It's just, if you, if you don't have any type of contrast with your curves and things it just it just tends to look fake so what i did is i took some of this this really really light it's what plaid i don't know if that's the color or it's, it looks gray to me it's really really light gray right here see the gray as light as possible i used my little makeup brush whatever this is in my dry brushing brush i just washed it so it's wet but I used that and I just put the lightest coat or lightest dusting, if you want to call it dusting, although it's wet, on my seats. You can't tell it by this video, but here, just looking at it in person and on my door panels, everything, because it gives it this, this effect, not, oops, not that it's dirty, but that it, it is material. You know, it's like, it's not plastic. It's not a hard piece of plastic with some uh, cream color paint shot on it. So things like that at least when you're up close looking at your kit really makes a big difference looking at it on this camera you can't tell i, I didn't even have to do it to be honest with you if it, i was just trying to satisfy you guys because you can't tell but for my own satisfaction i was like that looks too darn fake so i i, I dry brushed it and you it looks a little dirty that's I, I guess that's all i can say but you can't really tell just makes it look a little bit dirty, but not not in the way it. So I'm, I'm I'm confusing myself. It gives it again. It gives it that material effect, but not it's dirty. Not like the dude drove it down a dirt road and then he let it sit in a barn for a month with the top down. You know, it's not like dirty, but it just okay. Whatever you get it. Okay, sorry. I I just got myself confused. Anyway, looks a lot better. So. 
this is going to end part one. This is going to be part one of the video. This, this is such a nice kit. Thanks for all you guys who recommended I go ahead and build this thing. But the only problem is now that I, I, I need to find another one because I've got an empty box that I wanted on my shelf. I wanted it sitting. Let's see. I wanted it sitting up here. I've got some older kits. I wanted it sitting up there all looking nice and everything. But no, let's build it. So I've got to find another one. So if you guys see one on eBay or something like that, and if you're on my Facebook group, could you send me a uh, <laughs> disclaimer? If you see one on eBay, that's about 25 bucks, not $50 or something. Send me a uh, message on Facebook. Say, hey, there's I saw this one on eBay. Or you can do it in the comment section. I, I get my comments pretty pretty quickly with YouTube, but I'd like to have another one of these kits to never build and um, to be able to look at. But anyway, rambling, sorry. Um, got to finish. I've got my rear end. <laughs> I've got my rear end all done up. Um, right there. It's ready to go in. Uh, the cross section here is, um, ready to go after I install my exhaust. So now my engine, oh, by the way, speaking of engine, I, you can't really tell, but I put some black wash on this thing and boy, did it come to life. Man, these cameras just don't do justice. Just don't do justice. Makes my work look bad. But anyway, I blackwashed it. I got the carburetor. The carburetor seems like it's just ginormous, like way too darn big. Maybe, maybe that's the way an old Rochester. I think that's what it would have been a Rochester. Maybe that's the way a Rochester carburetor was. But it looks out of proportion. Let me set it. Look how darn big the thing is. It's like this giant carburetor but it is a four barrel anyway but then then what's crazy is this big mac daddy oil bath breather or something like that come on sits down over top of it and you can't even see it so doesn't really matter if it's too big or not you won't even be able to see it what was i saying um oh yeah so i'll get my engine glued into the chassis run my exhaust then i can put my the rear differential that's all built. See how I did that with the shocks? I glue it all together. So that way, whenever, again, after I, if I have to run my exhaust over it, that thing just fits right in there and it's ready to uh, just, just glue a few little spots. And the shocks are already on and everything like that. So I've already mentioned that before in the video, but that's how I do it. Um, then I'll dry brush her up a little, give it some, give it some detail, get the interior installed in it get it get in get it inside this sweet looking 55 isn't 55 the best looking of the the three years that they made those similar body styles my dad was a 56 guy i don't know why but i just have found an appeal with the 55 it seems like the 55 has more of a blocked off front nose seems like the let's get into it's not completely blocked off but the uh oh i still got to do some uh some chrome i'll do that on number two video two but the 56 seemed to have more of a slanted i don't know maybe i'm wrong it just seems like the 55 is more blocked off maybe it's because the square chrome anyway 55 is my favorite year model my dad was a 56 guy and who in the world even likes a 57 they're so ugly I'm sure i'll hear it from that but i've never liked the 57 just they they changed too much they made it ugly all right, I'm done talking. Sorry about that. Um, hey, guys, thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't already, go over and hit that button and subscribe. And um, I don't ever say this, but go over and hit the bell also, because that way, if I have a live stream or if I have a new a new video, you'll be um, notified of it. I'm going to start having live streams um, pretty regular, and that's a lot of fun. I love to interact with you guys and gives us an opportunity opportunity to do that. Um, hobby nut models, go to hobby nut models, go check out those sanding brushes that are sanding pads that I've already mentioned and shown to you. These guys right here, I've got a whole bunch of them. Mark sent me. Thank you, Mark. Go over there and check those out. Um, link will be in the description for those sanding pads. Go over there and check out his inventory. If you like planes, if you like armor, and especially if you like 124th and 125th scale cars, go over and check out Mark's inventory at hobbynutmodels.com. Link in the description for that. And our Facebook group, 
go join our Facebook group. We are growing, growing, growing. It's a lot of fun. Thank you for all you guys that have already joined. And is it? this is weird. I, I'm sitting here just like filming this bench. Isn't that weird? I'm telling you about all this stuff, but it's like I could turn it around on my face right now, but I've got these crazy looking reading glasses on and stuff and I just look ridiculous. But anyway, go, uh, go check out hobby nut models, go check out our Facebook group and get joined. It's so much fun. Thank you for all the guys that are on the Facebook group that post your pictures and comments and all those things. What a blast. Um, yeah. So, uh, that's all I got. And we come back for part two of the 55 Chevy. This baby's going to come together and um, be looking sweet. Um, that's about all I got. You guys take care. See you in part two in just a few days. Uh, be on alert for our live streams. And uh, you guys take care. See you later. <laughs>